Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This week we're going to talk about the nine steps that I use to get the perfect glue up when I'm putting a bamboo backing onto my reflex deflex bows. This same process can be used if you're using uh, a hickory backing or a white oak backing or any other backing that you want to use onto the surface of another uh, belly piece. But guys, it's nine basic steps that are the key to success. So follow along with me, I'll show you how to do it. Step one in the glue process, dry fit your parts. This process or this step cannot be underestimated. Uh, what it does for you is help you understand exactly how your parts are going to go together, number one. Number two, it helps you understand if you have enough uh, clamping materials like clamps and or bands or however you choose to uh, bind this together, it helps you understand if you have enough of those uh, tools. All right. The other thing it does is help you understand the alignment in advance. So you know how the parts fit together, you know what indexing marks you need to make so that you can get everything set in the same place. Uh, and lastly, how much effort and time is going to go into the process of uh, putting or doing the glue job. Right? So you should understand about how long it's going to take you to do this process, to, do a, to get everything glued up, how well your joints are going to match up. So like where your power lamb ends and your bamboo comes into contact with the belly wood, uh, what kind of glue lines you're going to get in that uh, scenario. <clears throat> and then uh, additionally, like how much pressure it's going to take to accomplish that. Uh, glue up, right? So you learn a lot of things when you take it for a test run. Because once you put glue on this stuff, guys, your parts just start sliding around like a jellyfish. All right. So you want to know that you're in good shape ahead of that moment. Step two is to pick the right adhesive for the job. So I've got like two ends of the spectrum here. Uh, a PVA glue, Type Bond 3, which will glue up. Uh, it's water soluble uh, when you use it. It is waterproof when it cures. Uh, great glue for uh, the boyer uh, in, in uh, doing any number of jobs. The drawback with this particular adhesive is that, um, at least where I am at, uh, and it's a dry climate, this stuff like sets up long before I ever even get my parts put together. Uh, so makes it very difficult and I'm on a very tight timeline to make it happen with like a tight bond three. Um, I have made uh, backed bows with this glue so it's not impossible and it's not a it's not a bad option you just got to be able to have your process down and work very fast. Uh, the one glue that I have used forever and there's a number of different types of epoxies on the market so like G-Flex would be one. Um, EA40 is the one I use provides a really long open time, right? So I can mix this together and I got like 90 minutes to put my parts together before uh, this starts to set up. So a 90 minute open working time is more than enough for me. Um, and when you make sure that you only bite off as much as you can chew, so I, I do it in two stages when I do my bows. So just laminating on the back and putting in a power lamp, more than enough time uh, is 90 minutes to get the job done. Now, uh, when it comes time to using this product, you just mix according to the manufacturer's instructions and uh, go to town. So. If you're struggling to get real tight glue lines, this product will fill gaps, all right? Um, so if there's a gap between your back and belly where the power lamp's coming together and you're really struggling to get that good, um, like early on in your gluing uh, experiences, this will fill the gap and uh, help you uh, come out with a bow that's actually functional even though the parts don't mate together really well where this will not every surface has to be prepped 
uh, perfectly uh, matched in, in uh, so the only way that you're going to get a, a quality uh, adhesion from a, a PVA glue. Step three, protect your surfaces. So if you're putting bamboo on the back of anything, uh, the rind of the bamboo is going to pretty much repel any kind of adhesive that you put on it. You're going to remove that rind in the end anyway. Uh, so I don't spend much time preparing the backs of my bamboo. However, we cannot get glue onto the surfaces, or don't want to anyway, of already prepared bellies or already prepared belly surfaces. Reason for that is we've already taken a lot of the tillering process out of the finished, uh, the finishing portions of our job here. Uh, so getting glue on there could eventually end up in the finished product. Uh, we want to do everything we can to mitigate that potential. So I just have blue tape here, a painter's tape, and I'm gluing the belly side piece of the belly. Uh, the other thing that this helps you do is in the heat of the moment when you're gluing, because guys, I kind of feel like when you're new at doing this, there's a little bit of panic that sets in when parts don't start going together as well as you had hoped. Uh, things start sliding around. You're putting, you're just putting glue on every surface. Don't put it on the blue surface. So you've already figured it out uh, ahead of the glue up, which side's getting the glue, uh, which side is not. So just kind of helps in that regard as well. Step number four, prepare your work. So got our glue at the ready, got gloves ready to go uh, to protect our hands from the epoxy, mixing materials, a cup and some spoons, one for each uh, part of the epoxy, spreader, a place to put the spreader that keeps it isolated and not sticking on everything under the sun when you're trying to work, long length rubber bands, uh, very short length rubber bands, even though they look longer, and then medium length rubber bands. So the way this breaks down is these short lengths uh, handle, take care of like the handle section right at the start and any small areas that I need additional clamping pressure. The long lengths will run the entire length of a limb and then back um, on this particular glue up. And then the medium length ones, this is what we're gonna use to put it down on the form uh, once everything is glued together and, and ready to uh, take shape. So that's what this is all about. Next, a surface on which to do the glue up. So hopefully you can see, yes, in the light there, that there is a piece of basically cellophane laid out here. Um, end to end. Now I ran myself just a little bit tight here. It's barely going to cover the tips. Um, you'll want to make sure that you leave yourself some extra space there at the tips to work with uh, when it comes time to wrapping up this bow because it, it performs two functions. One, you're not going to spill epoxy all over your, your workbench. Two, you're going to wrap the bow in the plastic to keep all of that epoxy contained while you work on it after you've got the glue up accomplished. You'll notice there are strips of tape affixed to the edge of the workbench. These pieces of tape are to be used when you get it glued, you get everything glued together, and this is going to hold all the parts at the grip right. This one's going to hold the end of the power lamp in place. So these keep everything lined up. This one's going to be used to hold the tip uh, in place while we wrap it up in the plastic. So everything's in place to ensure that our alignment is right and that we have a clean environment once we're done. Uh, getting everything put together. Last but not least, our jig or whatever form you're going to use uh, to induce the reflexed and deflexed shape. Now we'll go through that process once we get everything glued together. On to step five. Prepare your surfaces for gluing. Guys, you've got to degrease or de-oil the surfaces of your parts before you glue them together, in particularly if you're using any kind of tropical hardwood, uh, in this case Paduk and Ipe. Um, Fels naphtha is a soap that you can pick up. Uh, it's a Castile soap that if 
if you're so inclined, you can actually do the water and soap deal here that will help degrease the surface of, of your uh, parts. So that is one way that you can go. Or the way that I choose to go is with acetone. Now, if you pre prefer to avoid this whole process altogether, uh, just sand your parts and get on about the glue up on freshly sanded parts. Uh, all those oils make their way to the surface of sanded parts, but they're not there uh, on freshly milled materials. So the closer you are to uh, the production time, like if these were freshly sanded this morning, uh, you would have a good chance of getting good adhesion without having to do anything in the way of uh, removing any kind of oils or anything like that and you can see it coming off on the, the rag here. Now when you're working with acetone of course you have got to keep your uh, environment very well ventilated guys. You do not want to uh, uh, be sniffing this stuff. right? Okay guys we're up to step number six and this is one of those optional steps but I would skip it only at your own risk. There are two things we're going to take care of in step six. One, we're going to take care of ourselves before we get ourselves committed to what is going to be a very involved gluing process, okay? So once we get going, we don't want to have to stop when Mother Nature calls us to duty. So visit the bathroom first, okay? Secondly, we want to be able to keep ourselves hydrated and moving while we're going. So now's the time to get your hands on a long sipping drink. Now, I prefer to keep my drinks in the can. I've already given this pro tip once before. Uh, that way, when you get the epoxy all over it, the can just goes in the trash. Ordinarily, I pour my beers into a glass. Uh, today, I'm gonna be uh, enjoying a double hazy IPA out of Eddie Line Brewery here in Colorado. So, uh, and they didn't pay me for the plug. That's just the beer I'm drinking and I enjoy it a lot. So, uh, we'll move on now to step number seven. All right, so to get things started, uh, we've got our parts degreased. They're laid out uh, on the plastic, ready to go. Got glue mixed according to instructions and a spreader ready to go. Guys, I'm gonna let you just kind of tag along as I get this process going. All right, so. We have put glue down on the belly surface and hopefully you can see here where it just, it's got that wet appearance across the entire length. And that's what we're looking for in all of our parts. Uh, so instead of subjecting you to watching me spread a uh, thin layer of glue on everything, uh, that's just what the uh, parts should look like. So it's only on the, on the belly piece right now, but I'm going to do the same uh, with the a power lamp and then again with the back so we want we want epoxy on all surfaces all mating surfaces so um it'll be like you know double the epoxy in throughout uh it does not have to be thick although when you get along to gluing in the power lamp i would put a little extra measure right out here at the fade outs to ensure that you got real good glue uh filling if necessary uh during your glue up um, I've done that with every glue, no matter how experienced I have gotten. I just put a little extra major security right All in. our parts are covered, and you can kind of see in the light there how everything has a good coating on it. Now, I have put the power lamp on top of the belly here simply because it's, it's wet with epoxy on both sides, so it doesn't make sense to set it on the, on the uh, bench top. Uh, but we are coated on all our surfaces and we are ready to assemble this guy. All right, I have made sure that I've got just a little bit extra glue right out here on these tips. Now I'm not afraid of some uh, squeeze out in this part of the construction because that's our most vulnerable space right there, the ends of our uh, power lamp. All right, so I'm going to get the glue out of the way here. Uh, I got my parts indexed on their side, so 
you can see where everything goes as far as getting it lined up. And they're lined up at center here. Okay. And I'm going to start applying my tape right that's here to ensure that we're all lined up. Now, on the center piece, you don't want to go right over your indexing lines because you still want to see that you are lined up as we progress through this build or through the glue up here. <clears throat> so I like to start at the center and then move on to the tips here. Like I said, this stuff just wiggles around on itself like, I don't know, like a jellyfish. It's just you can't control it, which is, makes this so important. Now you get your parts realigned here. And again, I don't want to cover up that transition. I want to be able to see if I'm getting a tight tight uh, glue line so I don't go right over the tip but real close to it enough such that I can keep the power lamp in alignment all right now you'll see that just these pieces of blue tape are starting to hold all my parts together so it is not going to require a ton of pressure to get that glue line right Okay, that's a lot to digest uh, in the form of a time lapse, but I want to show you what uh, each side of this limb is, or the bow is going to look like. So this is yet unwrapped. Uh, we wrapped one length across the grip area, concentrating those wraps right where the power lamb ends. Right, so there's a lot of wrap going on right here. So a lot of pressure being brought to bear right at that joint. And then start the wrap on the limb ahead of the end of the power lamb and wrap down, concentrating wraps right at that juncture where the power lamb ends, and then wrapping out through the remainder of the limb, back down the limb, and then again, concentrating a lot of wraps right there on the power lamb and up here to the grip. So it doesn't take an awful lot to hold things in order out here into the limbs, but it does require quite a bit to get a very solid glue line right here where all three parts marry together. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap out the remainder of this and then we'll come back to step next. That all of our parts have been glued up and assembled. We move on to step number eight, and that is giving this guy its shape, right? So um, I like to give it a little bit of flex in the reflex direction uh, to get started here, um, to get the parts kind of sliding on one another. And then we got to have our jig ready to go. Now, <clears throat> the way I like to set these up, on just a standard reflex deflex is to have a pretty good sized block right through the center here and then we are going to tie everything down and then introduce some reflex out here at the tips now the key here guys is to not be uh, not look for extreme amounts of bend right so um, they can look exciting when you got whopping bends going on, but the fact of the matter is that whopping bends become fickle uh, when you're trying to, to A, tiller them, B, shoot them. Uh, and we're not trying to make a fickle bow here. We're trying to make ourselves a very uh, efficient, um, 
reflexed and deflexed bow. So here, um, I like to keep my wraps even. So from center, I've gone out to same deal here. Uh, and what this is, is to just keep uh, the bow in place, right? So we are now attached to our jig. And I have pieces that are going to go out here at the tips to then help introduce that reflex. Start low. Start low. And then we just manage these up the way here so that we can then get our larger piece in. Now once we have got everything wrapped down, we need to then go on to step number nine, the very last step of everything, and that is to allow this bow to cure. Now there are a couple different methods for curing, one being in a hot box if you are uh, lucky enough to have one. Uh, you can set it in there at about 165 to 185 degrees. This will cure out in uh, about six hours. All right, so uh, if you are like me and don't have a hot box, you allow this thing to cure out for 24 hours, and that'll cure the epoxy. Now, you should not in any instance begin tillering this bow uh, without allowing it a full cure of about 24 hours. Um, I've heard some guys suggest that you go 48. Uh, either way, guys, you know, you, you do what you believe is going to be best for you. I've, I've always gone 24 and have never had any issues with delaminations on this type of glue up. Uh, so those are the nine steps. There's our finished glue up right there. It's looking really pretty good. I'm excited to get that thing out of the mold and ready to uh, ready to tiller. Notice that the reflex in those limbs is in fact the tiller that we uh, put into the belly and backing strips ahead of gluing it up. So this is reverse tiller. All right, so thank you guys for uh, hanging around. I will catch up with you next week.